time and then mark as I crossed the third tower, but they sat back from their instruments as the lead engineer calmly transmitted. That's the last data point, Kaz. Nice flying. See you at the debrief. In the cockpit, the explosion was stupendous. The gull hit just ahead and left of me, shattering the acrylic plastic canopy like a grenade. The 550-mile-an-hour wind, full of seagull guts and plexiglass shards, hit my chest and face full force, slamming me back against the ejection seat, then blowing me around in my harness like a rag doll. I couldn't see a thing, blindly easing back on the stick to get up and away from the water. My head was ringing from what felt like a hard punch in my left eye. I blinked fast to try to clear my vision, but I still couldn't see. As the jet climbed, I pulled the throttles back to mid-range to slow down and leaned forward against my straps to get my face out of the pummeling wind, reaching up with one hand to clear the guck out of my eyes. I wiped hard, left and right, clearing my right eye enough for me to glimpse the horizon. The Phantom was rolling slowly to the right and still climbing. I moved the control stick to level off, wiped my eyes again, and glanced down at my glove. The light brown leather was soaked in fresh, red blood. I bet that's not all from the seagull. I yanked off the glove to feel around my face, fighting the buffeting wind. My right eye seemed normal, but my numb left cheek felt torn and I couldn't see anything out of my left eye, which was now hurting like hell. My thick green rubber oxygen mask was still in place over my nose and mouth, held there by the heavy jawline clips on my helmet. But my dark green visor was gone lost somehow in the impact and the wind. I reached back and pivoted my helmet forward, wiggling and re-centering it. I needed to talk to somebody, and fast. Mayday, 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 I yelled, mashing down the comm button with a thumb slippery with blood. This is Phantom 665. I've had a bird strike. Canopy's broken. I couldn't see well enough to change the radio frequency and hoped the crew in the observation tower was still listening. The roar in the cockpit was so loud I couldn't hear any response. Alternately wiping the blood that kept filling my right eye socket and jamming the heel of my hand hard into my left, I found I could see enough to fly. I looked at the Chesapeake shoreline below me to get my bearings. The mouth of the Potomac was a distinctive shape under my left wing and I used it to turn towards base, up the Maryland shore to the familiar safety of the runways at Patuxent River Naval Air Station. The bird had hit the left side of the Phantom, so I knew some of the debris from the collision might have been sucked into that engine, damaging it. I strained to see the instruments. At least I couldn't see any yellow caution lights. One engine's enough anyway, I thought, and started to set up for landing. When I leaned hard to the left, the slipstream blew across my face, keeping the blood from running into my good eye. I shouted again into my mask, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Phantom 665's lining up for an emergency straight in full stop runway 31, hoping someone was listening and that other jets were getting out of my way. As Pax River neared, I pulled my hand away from my left eye and yanked the throttles to idle, to slow enough to drop the landing gear. The airspeed indicator was blurry too, but when I guessed the needle was below 250 knots, I grabbed the big red gear knob and slammed it down. The Phantom made the normal clunking and shuddering vibrations as the wheels lowered and locked into place. I reached hard left and slapped the flaps and slats down. The wind in the cockpit was still my own personal tornado. I kept leaning left, took one last swipe at my right eye to clear the blood, set the throttles about two-thirds back, jammed my palm back into my bleeding left eye socket, and lined up. The F-4 has small bright lights by the windscreen that glow red when you're at the right angle for landing, and it also sounds a reassuring steady tone to say you're on speed. I blessed the McDonnell aircraft engineers for their thoughtfulness as I clumsily set up on final. My depth perception was all messed up, so I aimed about a third of the way down the runway and judged the rate of descent as best I could. The ground on either side of the runway came rushing up and slam. I was down, yanking the throttle to idle and pulling up on the handle to release the drag chute, squinting like hell to try to keep the Phantom somewhere near the middle of the runway. I pulled the stick all the way back into my lap to help air drag.